I usually wait until October to announce the winner of The Cock, the prize named after a YouTuber for the dumbest question asked in the expectation that there's no possible answer. But as the year wears on, I realise there's no way we'll be able to compete with this year's clear front-runner, so I'm going to give the award, which is now bigger than ever, a couple of months early. Before I introduce the winner, I first want to take you back to the very first cock, which was awarded in 2008 to Stone Commander. How come, if that's true, how come, like, every planet I've ever seen, including Earth, is round? The prize was then known as the Stone Commander Defiance and Ignorance Prize, but when Stone Commander turned out to be a very nice fellow who accepted that his question had been rather arrogantly put, I renamed the prize in honour of someone who truly fulfilled the perfect mix of arrogance and boneheadedness that the prize embodies. The reason I mentioned this is that in the 2008 video, I parodied Stone Commander's ignorance of the forces of nature with this. And another thing, how come I see water one day... And the next day, bada boom, it's gone. Then a few hours later, bada bing, there it is. Now this was meant to be a parody. I never dreamed there really was a creationist out there who didn't understand what drives the tides, let alone someone who's paid to broadcast his ignorance to millions of people. But that was before this. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never miscommunication. You can't explain that. Yes, David Silverman's face says it all. Did Bill O'Reilly really say, tide goes in, tide goes out? You just can't explain that? Well, watch, because he says it again. You can explain why the tide goes tide in? Tide goes in, yeah. tide goes out. See, the out. water, the tide comes in, and it goes out, Mr. Silverman. Uh, maybe it always comes in on top of Mount Olympus, out. who's making the tides go in and no, out. No, no, but you can't explain that. A... To those who don't know him, Bill O'Reilly is a commentator on Fox News, although I'll always remember him as the anchorman for one of the worst tabloid shows on television, Inside Edition. After he told the world no one can explain what causes the tides to go in and out, O'Reilly was inundated with clarifications from people who went to school and understood the cause perfectly well. David Beverly Hills, Florida. Uh, what do you mean when you refer to the tides, when you ask about the existence of God? Science explains the tides, the moon's gravity pulls on the ocean. But unlike Stone Commander, Bill wasn't the least bit humbled by the fact that he'd just been given an answer to a question he had told us was impossible to answer. He just moved on to the next thing he was ignorant of, that he was convinced would stump us all. Okay, how'd the moon get there? How'd the moon get there? Look, you pinheads who attacked me for this, you guys are just desperate. How'd the moon get there? How'd the sun get there? How'd it get there? Can you explain that to me? Well, yes, we can, Bill. Which I guess means that we were awake in school and the pinhead would be, well, you. Now, I'm sure most people would laugh at your ignorance and give you a very condescending response that makes you look like a complete idiot. But not me. I'm not going to be condescending because this is a question I often get asked by children. So the principal of our local primary school has invited you to sit in on one of their science classes where you can learn about space along with the other kids. And at the end of it, we're going to do a show and tell. All right, children, Mr O'Reilly will be joining us in class today. We're going to learn about the moon and stars. OK, a lot of you probably think I am being condescending, and you're right. This class is way past learning about the moon and stars, so I don't want to insult the intelligence of these kids by going through it all again. Sorry, Bill, I'm afraid we'll have to put you in a lower class. That's better. OK, let's start with the basics. Now pay attention, Bill. So where is space? Up there. Yeah. And what Above. Are, the what, what's also up there? Stars and moons and planets. That's right, Tommy. Now, the planets all formed from dust that was drawn together by gravity. Ironically, the same thing that makes the tides go in and out. And they got bigger and bigger until they formed large planets that orbited the sun. Then two of these planets collided, forming the Earth. The collision threw up a lot of rock that circled the Earth and again was drawn together by gravity to form the moon. As for how the sun got there, it's explained in our class science book, Deep Deep Space. Now, children, any more questions about the moon? Yes, Billy, again. How can we have that and Mars doesn't have it? Can anyone in the class answer that? OK, I don't want to see the same hands up all the time. Come on, Billy, don't you have any idea? 
in the fact file it says Mars does have a moon. In fact, it has two. Do you understand that a planet can have two moons, Billy? Well, sorry, but it does. Any other questions? <sighs> yes, Billy. How did that little amoeba get here? Crawl out there. How to do it? Maybe some of the older children can come into our class to explain it to you. Evolution is the way things change over time, over a billion years or more. Well, without evolution, no one would live on Earth. It's nature, and they like discovering nature and seeing how its body works and stuff. Tide comes in, tide goes out. Billy, I've just in, explained that. It's in, the moon, Billy. Okay, yeah, the moon does it. Fine. How'd the moon get there? Who put it there? No one put the moon there. Now you're just being silly, Billy. You're going to have to explain this for our this show happened? and tell, so stop being silly. Okay, if we have existence, if we have life on Earth, how come they don't have it on the other planets? Well, you don't know that they don't, Billy. Have you been to Uranus and checked there's no life there? Now you're just showing off. Still, at least you do understand that the gravitational attraction of the moon causes the tides. So you earn a smiley face sticker and you can choose a toy from the toy tray. OK, Billy, now it's time to get behind the teacher's desk so you can practice your lines for show and tell. I've written it out for you. Can you read what's on the card? Okay. Now, I can't read it. There's no, there's no words on it. Don't be silly, Billy. The moon was formed... Now, what does that mean? Billy, the moon was formed... Right, fuck it! Billy! Fuck it! I'll take away your smiley face sticker. Fucking thing sucks! Okay, Billy's thrown a hissy fit and stormed out of class, but at least I tried to educate him with kids of his level instead of being condescending. The difference between Bill O'Reilly and five-year-old kids is that at least they're willing to listen and to learn. Listen to me because you'll learn. Oh, all right. So when kids ask a basic question like where the moon came from, they actually want to know the answer. If it doesn't make sense to them, they'll question it or argue against it. But that's good. It shows intelligence and critical thinking. When Bill O'Reilly asks where the moon came from, it's in the confident expectation that there's no possible natural explanation. And it's for asking a dumb question in the confident expectation there's no possible answer that Bill O'Reilly is in a league of his own to receive this year's large and glittering cock.